could be emulated but never duplicated. Nobody like you. Nobody. You know, they might say that they making a million dollars a day, but the million dollars that he made in the 60s and the 70s, it's like 20 of these million today. Uh, my name is James Kitchings. They call me Jap. I met Eddie and them uh, down at the pool room, you know, and uh, what happened was me and a guy named Cyril Kincaid, we was like about 17 at the time. We, was, uh, we had been working for this guy named Marshall. So, uh, Doing what? selling drugs for him, you Small know, amount, selling yeah. penny caps. You know, he was paying us a quarter off a dollar. So we had a falling out with Marshall, you know, just a partner of the ways, because he wanted us to move to another area and we wanted to stay down in the valley. So, Sidel uh, and I, we went and we was talking with Eddie. At the time, Eddie was just hustling around the pool room, you know, uh, and, and hustling crap games. So uh, we told him, you know, explained a little spiel to him, uh, and he went and bought a little stuff and uh, put it in the building across from the pool room, and me and Cedell went to selling it. So what year was this? This was 1968. So this was his first, uh, first getting started? Yeah. So can you I say was there at the beginning. Okay. You know, uh, I'm the original. As far as selling drugs for Eddie Jackson, I'm the first guy that ever did it. Me how and Sidel Kincaid. How did this, was it a, from what Court Casino was saying when he first, when Eddie first tried to get started, it was a little bit rocky at the beginning? Yeah, it was real rocky. Uh, we, uh, guys ran, ran scams on us. Uh, Sissy Sam and Buddy, they used to have, they used to sell the, uh, the weight down in the, in, in the valley. They had a spot right there on uh, Columbia and Brush down in the basement. They used to sell pea and mixed jive. You could buy your pure from them and, and cut it and sell it yourself. Yeah, a quarter mixed jive was $45. And uh, a quarter of pea was like $250. So Eddie was under the impression that he was buying a quarter of pure. But, and uh, uh, Sissy Sam and Buddy told him, say, you can put a six on this, right? So Eddie thinking he under the impression he buying a quarter of pure because he gave him 250 for it. It's not pure, it's mixed jive. We, he cut it like five times. So this makes this, the, the purity in this stuff, man, is like, you know what I'm saying? So me and C. there, we struggling selling this, you know? We might sell uh, $100 worth of stuff a day, you know? Which for us, you know, we making $25, $30 and we taking care of our habit and whatever. You know, it was all right to us, but it, you know, it, other people around there that were selling stuff at the time, they, they was making money. So we were scuffling and scuffling with it, you know, and we did this for like four or five months until uh, Box, uh, uh, Box, uh, he was a, uh, just another average guy, man, at it. Who happened to know Claxton? Who happened to know Claxton. How do you think he knew Claxton? Uh, Bots used to be, uh, you know, kind of up there before we got to use him and stuff, you know? And uh, he, had, he had caught a case years before, you know, he was off the east side where Claxton and them was from. You know, so Bots knew Claxton, you know? So he, he put Eddie with Claxton. And, when I came, Claxton yeah, Claxton had the only uh, uh, El Caballero in town. You know, that was the dressed out Fleetwood with the tie on the back and all of that. Yeah. What about you remember Marzette? Marzette and Bill Franks, uh, I just heard about them, you know. They didn't, they didn't, they wasn't, uh, what you would say, approachable, or uh, uh, where you could just bump into them, you know, but you knew who they were, but you never saw them, you know. You know, but uh, yeah, Marzette and Bill Franks, yeah. So it's a rocky road in the beginning. Yeah, it's real rocky. And how does he beats Box hooks him up with Classic and then tell us how things started to change? Oh, well, they moved up on, uh, so up say, on Hancock. Say, say once Eddie hooked up with Classic. Once Eddie hooked up with Claxon, he started getting a, a product that he could he could work with, you know. 
he started getting a, 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 a real product, something that he could cut and, and make good. And uh, he started you know, selling the penny caps, he kept saving his money. And then he bought that building up there on Hancock. And then he started selling quarters. Now, somebody who had been, been selling drugs and had worked for other people when they were in the street at a young age, did any strike you as being different or more business-wise than anybody else? Oh yeah, he had that he had that charisma too, you know? He had that 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 intangible, you know, just that that something that drew people to him. That he he was likable, man. You, you know, you just loved him. He was fun. You know, and, and he wasn't intimidating, even though he was real big. You know, he was like about 6'3", weighed about 350, but he wasn't intimidating. You know, he was friendly, he was approachable. He was, he was the man for that position, man. You know, he was, he would, that, that spot was for him. That was his time, you know. So things started getting, getting rolling. And what are you, what's your, what are you doing? Okay, but when things, Jumped, really jumped. I had one to the joint. I had a little, I had a little uh, lost me from a building case. I got like a, a six months I had to do. In between that six months that I was gone, we went from riding in an old black '98 with a with a two by four prop in behind the driver's seat to driving a red and black Cadillac. San Mateo Red. I know we'll forget it because we had went out to the car dealership out on Grand River and he had picked that car out when we had first started. And I was like, man, you ain't finna make that kind of money to buy no Cadillac, you know? Because I'm not thinking that big, but he is. And when I came home, he had that Cadillac. He had that building up there on, uh, on Hancock and they were selling penny caps out the back door and, and quarters of mixed jive out the front door. Did you get re-employed when you came Oh yeah, oh yeah. I went to work, we opened up over there on, on Benson. That used to be uh, Eddie Daddy's house. They used to live over there on Benson. We opened up over there on Benson. And uh, yeah, yeah. And uh, then they put George James over there with me. Cedell was there first. Then when I came home, I went over there. Then uh, Cedell got fired because he had bought a new car and he didn't want to, you know, people was jealous of him and everything and so he got fired. Prison, yeah, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. He, he was that guy in prison. So, uh, we over there, so, so I'm, for a while I'm by myself. So Eddie sends George over there with me and George uh, was an old head, old con player and, and George knew the streets and he knew the dope game. And that's basically where we learned the game from, was from George James. And George, uh, he showed me how to, how to sell eighths. Like a quarter of mixed jive would have like 18 little uh, spoons in it, right? Okay, now it's called $45. George showed me how to take three of those spoons, sell them for $15. That meant that Eddie would get $45 and me and George would get $45. You see what I'm saying? So, uh, needless to say, we sold a whole lot of apes out of that house too. We made a whole lot of money, me and George. I was saving my money. I was saving my money. When I left here, when, when, the, when the indictments came down in 71, I left here in 72, I had about maybe $60,000 or something. This is yeah. Talk about people might not understand now, but 40 years ago, A, and then B, especially for a black guy in 1970, that was a lot. Oh yeah, man, there's a lot of money, man. A whole lot of money. I stayed gone for like seven years. Where did you go? To New York, to Brooklyn. Oh, that's where you lived in? Yeah. I stayed gone for like seven years. I stayed gone from like... 72 to like 78. They were still here doing all that time. I got the fuck on. Why are you afraid? Yeah, them indictments and shit, man. I had to go, man. It was time to go. You so know. Did you avoid any trouble? Yeah. Yeah, I avoided, you know, and just to show you about the investigation that the feds had when they indicted all those guys. Now, I was running the house on Benson, and I was selling like anywhere from like 20, $25,000 worth of uh, uh, 
of quarters a day. And my name never came up in the uh, indictment, so the indictment had to be kind of uh, ephemeral, you know? A little short and compact, you know what I'm saying? They just got the people on the peripheral. They didn't know the, whole, didn't know the whole story of, uh, uh, you know, it was a whole lot of people that didn't get indicted, man, that should have got indicted, but didn't. So they didn't really know how much he was making. No, they didn't. No, they didn't, you know? Uh, they basically just got lucky, man, you know, and 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 uh, somebody told, you know, hey, he got he got this big shipment in, you know, and uh, it's over there at such and such a house, you know, going on over there on Hubble, it's over there on Hubble, you know, and uh, whoever it was who told knew how the, the, the stash was hooked up and everything because they couldn't have found that stuff by themselves, man. Well, they just couldn't. Trash. Organization with, with other people in the How many you were on the You mean nowadays? No, no, then. Oh, it was. Then it was. Well, you know what? Then and now. Compared to. Then it was, it was Eddie Jackson, Eddie Jackson's crew, yeah. and then it was just everybody else that probably got stuff through Eddie Jackson some kind of way, you know? I mean, the man got busted with, like, 13 kilos of stuff that was like 90% pure. 90% pure. He's million today. You know, black men don't get that kind of stuff, man. I mean, very few people in America could get that kind of stuff. 90% pure. I, I mean, you could take like one kilo and make like 90 of them. And especially the stuff that they're selling on the streets today, this, this ain't nothing but garbage. Anybody in the streets today that compared with Eddie Jackson? Ain't nobody compared with Eddie Jackson since Eddie Jackson left. He could be emulated but never duplicated. Nobody like him. Nobody. You know, they might say that they ain't making a million dollars today, but the million dollars that he made in the 60s and the 70s, it's like 20 or what about, um, you remember seeing Corbin? Yeah, I know Birmingham. Birmingham was, that was Eddie's mate. Birmingham was the boss. What was his personality? Laid back, just like he is now. Laid back, you know, smooth. And him and, him and Eddie made a, made a, a, a good uh, one-two punch. Yeah, yeah, they, they made a good one-two punch. Him and him and Eddie did, you know. Did you when it first, with Eddie at all, so? when we first started out, it was like me, Eddie, and Rango, me, Eddie, and Russell. What was uh, Eddie's uh, Eddie was flamboyant. Eddie was flamboyant, man. Uh, Eddie might roll up to you and 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 give you all the one dollar bills in his bankroll. He might have a pile of one dollar bills like that and just give them to you. It might be. Three, four hundred dollars, you know. Uh, you have a bag full of one dollar bills in the car because all the one dollar bills that came from the joints and from the streets, he throw that away. You know, he ride down the middle of the street and just throw that out the window. All the one dollar bills and keep them. He kept hundred dollar bills in his in his pocket. You know, I said, damn, we got all the hundred dollar bills in America. <laughs> yeah, that kind of thing, man. Yeah, Eddie was flamboyant, though, man. He was flamboyant, man. You know, he just that 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 dope man wrote that dope man uh, uh, thing. That was that was his time. That was him. He was made for that. You know, he probably could have been successful in in other avenues and other businesses, but. That was his niche, man. Do you remember his father? No, I don't remember the old man. No, I don't remember the old man. He you know? died like yeah, yeah, you know, I, I know they had the pool room over there, uh, 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 Hastings over there, and my uncle used to, uh, I used to go with my uncle when I was a little boy and ride, and he used to go by there, you know, but I don't remember the old man. You know, uh, it's like Eddie was like maybe, Eddie and Courtney and, and Dolph and all them, they were like maybe six, seven years older than me, you, you know. Rudolph and Rudolph? Yeah. But Rudolph was, uh, he was, um, how could I say? 
Give me five old few did a lot, man. They, they had that that uh, they started that price war thing and ran the price of uh, uh, stuff down to uh, what they were selling half a quarters for twenty dollars, and they was just few. They didn't Rudolph like each other. Five, oh. Yeah, Rudolph and Five. They had that price war thing going on. But that, that was all Eddie's people, man. You know, uh, when I came home from the joint, that's how, who he had around him. He had 5 Rudolph, Courtney was there, and uh, 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 Eddie, and and Russell was there. Yeah, that's who he had around him, you know. And they took care of all the, you know, dropping off and picking up, you know. Uh, Rudolph was was my man. He would drop, drop off the uh, big bags of quarters to me big shopping bags full of quarters and pick up the shopping bags full of money, you know? <laughs> what about, tell us about in general what Detroit was like, the streets, how, how wild it was getting, you know, that was the era of Detroit that came on as a murder city. And uh, no, that was a little later on. Uh, when we first started, uh, it was just about getting money and, and having a good time and, you know, and dressing shop and, after, you know, success breeds a lot of copycats. You know, a lot of people got into the game after that because heroin was so plentiful, you know, and, and so the game bred a lot of copycats. There's a lot of people that's in the game that's not of the game. They ain't got no business in it, but they are. And so they stumble and trip over their own feet and they get Killed, you know, and then you got, you know, you stick up men and, 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 and guys like that, and if you don't know what you're doing in the streets, you fall victim. How did you guys avoid a lot of them? Uh, well, and, and all the time I ran that joint over there, I got stuck up one time. And that was by my childhood friend, you know. He came in and, and, and robbed the joint. But basically what it was, it was, you know, where you made yourself available at. If you don't make yourself available in those types of situations, those types of places, it's hard for a guy to, to get you like that. You know what I'm saying? So th that's basically what it was. See, we had an area where we were down in the valley, you know, in the heat wave and, and the Vernal Bar. And uh, if strangers came in there, they, they was recognized as strangers and we kept an eye on them, you know, and it, if, you try to do something wrong, we're going to tear you a new ass, you know? So people didn't come down there, you know? Uh, it was, that's just how it was. That's just how it was, you know? You, you know, you go to places where you feel comfortable at, you know? Like 20 grand, like Eddie basically owned the 20 grand, you know? You'd always see Eddie in 20 grand, but uh, I remember this one guy, he, he, he had robbed Eddie a couple times over there on Chicago, where Fairley used to stay. He caught Eddie in the hallway and had robbed him once, took the jewelry and stuff. Then he caught him again and he had robbed him. Eddie had told him, he said, look, man, you gonna hit you a couple of licks, you know. I know you a hustler just like I'm a hustler, but we cut this on out. So, dude didn't pay heed. So, you know, he came up on the missing end, you know. Like I say, you know, he caught Eddie in the place where, cause Farrell Lee was staying there and, and, you know, Eddie was flying point. You see Eddie, he got a big old EJ on, man, with maybe 300 diamonds in it. You know, not chips, diamonds, you know. So, you know, he robbed him a couple times, but you know, he came up on the short end, you know, and the word to get out, man, you know, it's certain things that you do to certain people, certain people that, you know, certain shit you don't do. You know, they never had no problems with stick-ups and stuff after that. And then 5-0, uh, yeah, they, five was 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 rough and tumble. Five would knock your ass out. You know, he five five had a left hook that was, you know, the Joe Frazier would envy that left hook, man. You know, he was dangerous. You know, and and they all came up out of the valley with the Valley Boys and and. and and the gang fighting and stuff, so they scrapped. You know, they scrapped. You know, it wasn't no cowards or nothing. You know, you wasn't just gonna come in and take nothing. You know, you, if you did take it, it'd coming back at you. You know, and 
people knew that. You know, people knew that. See, right now in this game today, it just ain't, it ain't, ain't no respect, man. You know, these guys, uh, like I say, there's a lot of people in this game ain't supposed to be in it. A lot of people get put into positions, you know, and, and they don't, you know, you gotta be groomed. You gotta know what you're doing in this game. You gotta know how to look out for the stick up man. You gotta know who the crooked cop is. You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, you gotta watch for the guy that's gonna try to, you know, break in your house and, and, and steal your stuff. You know, you gotta know who to associate with. You think you guys were a lot more sophisticated than the ball and put them out? I wouldn't say so much as sophisticated, man. We was a lot, we was smoother than these guys is today. He was smooth, even with all that flamboyance that, that, that Eddie uh, demonstrated. Eddie was flamboyant, man. Eddie would come into the bar and tell the barmaid, uh, get a barmaid a couple of hundred dollar bills, say, get everybody in here a drink, baby. And uh, when, when, when that money, when that's gone, come on back, because I got some more where that come from. You know? You know, that's the kind of guy he was. You know, and he buy drinks and, and, and in the bar all night long. He was just that kind of guy. He was flamboyant like that. Man. As, a, as an older guy now, with life experience, looking back at the time of your life, what do you, what's your, what do you think that you know about what was it good, was it bad, or just part of life? Uh, when I look back, I see a lot of wasted years, yeah. Uh, we had a lot of fun. Nobody wants to go to prison, you know. Uh, I wouldn't recommend it to anybody. If a young guys thinking about going into a life of drug dealing, I wouldn't recommend it to him. I tell him uh, do something a little bit more constructive with his time, like go to school, get an education, you know. Uh, right now, I'm in the process of going back to school, you know, going to college. Uh, I wish I had to listen to Eddie and, 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 and went on and went to school like he said, but I didn't. You know, he had. Oh, Eddie told you. Yeah, he had. He had good information. You know, he had good, good, good things that he tried. You know, he always tried to encourage you to do something positive, besides party and, and, and throw money away. You know, but you know, the life uh, will consume you. It will just engulf you, man. And, you can't get out of it because you get addicted to different lifestyles. It, even if you don't use, you get addicted to getting all that money. What about what, what when I was you were in the 80s, man? Did you stay in the game? Did you get in trouble? I stayed right in the game. You know, uh, I you know I just can't call off people's names because a lot of those people are still alive. But just about every major player that came through downtown after Eddie Jackson, I've been associated with him. Did you ever get any trouble? Yeah, later on in the 90s, uh, I wind up going to prison. I did all the 90s. For what? For drugs. For drugs, naturally. That's, you know, that's what I'm trying to tell you. That's what I did. That's what I do. You know, I mean, if you start off doing that, at a young age, like in, in, in uh, 68, I was 17 years old. Your whole life, man. Yeah. About drugs. About drugs. And uh, you could say it's a, it was a wasted effort, you know, because you, you don't really you accumulate nothing. Not nothing, really. Memories. Yeah. A lot of good memories, you know, uh, but other than that, it's, you know, it's an empty slate, you know. So like I said, I wouldn't recommend it to any youngster, you know, if he's thinking about going into a life of crime or on whatever level, I wouldn't recommend it to him because all he got to do is, is basically do the math, you know, and, and figure out if he already been to jail, you know, just figure out how much money he made, then take that and maybe divide it by how many years he did, you know, and and, 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 and and you know, just do the math and see what you come up with and see, you know, you might come up with pennies that you 
you know, you, you, you gave your uh, 10 years of your life away for us. So, so it, you know, everybody's not going to get rich in this game. And then a lot of people who get rich in this game, they wind up broke anyway. So, it's not recommended.